Live from the studios of 580 CFRA, downtown in the heart of the Byward Market, it's the Lowell Green Show. Filling in for Lowell Green, here's Nick Vandergrat. Good morning. The numbers are 521. There is a group of people. This kind of stuff just drives me crazy. And it's, it's a little thing, really, in the greater scheme of things, but it's one of these little uh, gran- grains of sand in the eye. There's a team running around the city wanting to make us a fair trade city. Now, doesn't that sound lovely? Oh, yes, we want to be fair, because that's a great Canadian virtue, to be fair. <sighs> All right. Well, usually when you hear that kind of thing, it tends to, res- the people who use it are, well, let's just say they're not really conservatives. Some conservatives do, I'm sure, because we all want to be fair. So I don't want to paint with too broad a brush on one side or the other, but let's just say the people who believe in this stuff haven't really done their homework. Because what does it mean to engage in fair trade practices? Okay, well, let me read a little of this to you. Where exactly does a cup of coffee come from? That's what. That's the question a group of volunteers from Ottawa hope you'll ask the next time you make a purchase. The Fair Trade Ottawa team is working to have the, the nation's capital named a Fair Trade Town, a designation given to a city where Fair Trade products are accessible and the people living there know what they are. Fair Trade is about looking closer at where your food comes from and where your things are made and understanding the consequences that your purchasing has on people in developing countries said Michael Crichton, chair of the Fair Trade of Fair Trade Ottawa. Since last spring, the group has been holding awareness campaigns around the city and compiling a thick report to show Fair Trade Canada that Ottawa is ready for the title. The goal is to help abolish child labor and worker abuse and to encourage sustainable production methods. All right, now that's the important sentence. Okay, here's their goal. It's to help abolish child labor and worker abuse and to encourage sustainable production methods. Now, I grew up on a farm. Now, I'm not going to say that my farming experience is anything like what goes on in South America, but the point is I understand manual labor. And when you hand somebody a hoe, instead of put them on a tractor with a cultivator, you've condemned him to long, hot days with very heavy manual labor that a cultivator could do in a matter of hours what it would take a man uh, days to do. So what sustainable really means is we want to keep you back in the third century or in 200 years behind us, but we want to do it in a way that eases our conscience because real sustainability is not making everybody work like dogs from sunup to sundown in an effort to reduce child labor because guess who a lot of those workers are? They just don't know. They just, they never think it through. That's, I think, what drives me crazy. It's a little thing. It's not really, you know, as far as we're concerned, doesn't really um, matter one way or the other, but don't tell me it's sustainable when you enslave somebody for the rest of their life. We'll be right back after this on a little green show. Let's go talk to Amber. Good morning, Amber. Hi. Um, we own a fair trade coffee company and, um, we're just listening to you talk about doing, you know, mechanizing that process. Right. And, uh, the reality is for small farmers and the way coffee grows naturally, it just can't be done. They're grown on very, very steep mountainous areas, and you you just can't mechanize the process. The only is way it, that it's been done with um, with larger companies is they actually you know cut down huge amounts of rainforest and make fields that it can be done in, but it's not naturally grown that way. So it has to be done with pesticides and chemicals, and and uh, so for a good product that's grown in the proper way, it has to be done manually. So, and the coffee also, um, it produces, its harvest is over time. So you'll have some berries or cherries, actually, on a plant that are ripe while others are not. So you can't just have a machine pick it. It has to be done visually. Uh, because let's face it, coffee is one of the most manually intensive uh, crops uh, in Absolutely. the world to harvest. Yeah. That, sugar cane, and rice. Those, mm-hmm. three, those three things are just back-breaking labor. And the way we used to pick tomatoes. Anyway, (laughs) at least I (laughs) thought so. Anyway, the point I'm making is that given innovation and given a a reason and a profit motive, people Mm -hmm. will find ways to get this stuff done. Yeah, it's true. I I would not want to see it done chemically, though, because that's the problem is, is, you know, so many people have trouble with coffee as a product because they can't digest it or it gives them stomach problems. That's because of the chemical processes that have been used to mechanize it with the large farms. 
So to get a good organic product that's grown naturally, I don't know how you would. Well, how do you weigh this off? Because what we're one of the goals here is to reduce child labor. And in, yeah. the, let's call it the second and third world, child labor makes up a large percentage of the workforce. Yep. Okay. Now, I, I mean, as us, for a company, we have buying principles where we're only buying from small cooperative farmers that are adhering to principles of no child labor. They're um, working together to put their resources so that they can have better processing facilities, things like that. So that process is in place somewhat, but... Um, yeah, I, I understand your point. Yeah, and that's because if you really care about the kids, okay? Because yeah. by the way, there's, there's nothing wrong with children working hard during a, you know uh, on the farm. I, I grew up that way. Uh, millions of people have done the same thing, and the vast majority of us are, of us are better off for it. Uh, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not talking about six and seven year olds slogging all day in the blazing sun, pulling a sack of coffee beans. You know, uh, that's not the kind of thing I'm interested in seeing happen. And yeah. to get away from that there has to be a move towards mechanization because... I... Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. I think, I think I've think i seen that happening with the other stages of the process, but the picking stage is certainly well, a I difficult don't, one. I'm not, I, by, the, by the way, Amber, I'm not picking on you specifically. No, I get I, it. I think... No, I just thought I'd share yeah. some I'm, gl- I'm glad you did. That's part yeah. of the reason why I bring it up because, look, it's easy for me to sit here and rant and rave, but it's uh, always better when somebody calls and, and uh, wants to present uh, a different point of view. Thanks, Amber. No problem. Bye. Okay, welcome back, everybody. 521-8255 is the number. Whatever's on your mind is fine with me. Let's go talk to Michael in Ottawa. Hi, Michael. Hello, Nick. Where to start? I'm also part of the Fair Trade Ottawa group. Okay, well, let me ask you something. How? Because one of my concerns about this, as I was expressing to Amber, is that whenever we hear this way overused word sustainability, I mean, I'm so sick of the word I could just... I'd, I'd love to strike it from the English language because it's so overused and mostly misunderstood. How can you be sure that when you go to these places that technology is being used to the best of the ad- advantage of the people there so they can lift themselves out of the quality they're in? Well, I'd say both Michael and I are, are members of Engineers Without Borders, and we're a group, it's a group that's looked at this in a huge detail and in fact started out looking at providing technology in the third world and then quickly decided, found out that that's really not effective right, right now. That's not what they need. So how do you get it to Because a it point? doesn't work. Okay, but how do you get it to a point where it will? Well, because I understand. Okay, because I, as I understand it, if you give, let's say, an African farmer a tractor, he'll, he'll drive it till it breaks and then it sits there because he can't get, can't get parts, right? That's right. Okay. I also have a friend who I also have another friend who was who's in Africa and started a business right now who providing uh rent to own to African farmers so that they can buy and not typically tractors but uh, threshing machines and even Well, who cares what it is? Well, that's, yeah. That's right. Yeah, it, it and, does And and their organization looked at what is the most effective way that the average Canadian can make a difference for the average African or South Af- South American farmer, because and that's where fair trade comes in. the The principle of fair trade, and, and I can send you some information, is that um, to guarantee that the farmers receive a fair price for their product, which isn't. And at the moment, coffee is expensive, and they're getting more than what fair trade would consider a fair price. So it, it's not a problem right now. But there are times in the cycle where Farmers just don't get enough money to survive. Well, that's and that's where the fair tra- that's where the fair trade kicks in. But what what happens in Africa and and many places, and this is where child labor comes in. Um, child labor in Africa is not the same thing as child labor here. A, a child who's working on a farm is not going to school, is not getting an education. And that's it, my whole point. That's that's what I'm. That's where my concern lies. Because as as I was expressing to earlier callers. Unless you can take that six-year-old out of the field and allow them to either be schooled at home or go to school, uh, you're condemning them to years of, of backbreaking poverty and, and hard work. And that's exactly what the, the fair trade movement's about. You know, so the, the people who are fair trade farmers are always cooperatives, um, and they get money on top of the, what they're paid for for their crops. Well, let me ask you something. To, to go towards building infrastructure, schools, and community centers, and and they are checked 
to make sure that its kids are not working in the, on their farms. Their kids are going to school. Now, when you say that they're always uh, uh, collect uh, cooperatives, you said this. The, I just want to make sure I have the terminology right. The cooperatives is what we're talking about. That's yeah. where farmers pool their financial resources uh, together. Okay. Yes. In order to for the benefit of all of them. For the benefit of all of them. Yes. Okay. Now, because in, in that sound, especially in the beginning, that I think would have tremendous results. But what I'm afraid of is in the long term, um, that's not a whole lot different than communism. And we wouldn't well, want to say that. Well, the, 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 uh, the Wheat Board is a cooperative. There's many cooperatives in North America that work very well. Uh, the one you were mentioning earlier, uh, Cranberries. Ocean Spray is a, is a cooperative. Yeah, but fair enough. But it's it has huge, it's a hugely prof, profitable and one that works very well. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. But it also has um, it's it's set in in a democratic society, and even the wheat board is now voluntary. So, I, and I'm only thinking about the long term. If it works in the short term and helps get these people out of the the crushing poverty they're in, then I don't know that I have a real objection to it. But based on what I read this morning, I'm thinking, okay, here we have a group of people who really want to help, but are are going around it sounds seemed to me like they were going about it all backwards because by encouraging fair trade practices as i understand the term all you're doing is making sure the six-year-old stays in the field uh, it's designed to for completely the opposite to make sure that the farmer has enough money that he can send his kids to school all right well that the kids aren't working in the field so well, i would do more research into it well i'm glad it, you straightened we, me out on that michael i appreciate your call and i have to let you go because i'm way over time for this call but uh Thank you very much for the for the uh, information.